Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video, I'm going to talk about the 20 plus best features of the new Nokia 6.1 Plus along with some important tips and tricks. Now first, I'll talk about the best features and after that, I'll cover the tips and tricks section. So if you're bored anyway, just skip ahead, but make sure you check out the tips and tricks section for sure. Now with that said, the first best feature about this phone is definitely its display. Now this phone packs a massive 5.8 inch IPS display with full HD plus resolution in the new 19 is to 9 aspect ratio protected by a 2.5D curved Corning Gorilla Glass 3. Now display itself looks pretty amazing in terms of picture quality. Now because of the new 19 is to 9 aspect ratio, display is much taller than the regular 16 is to 9 aspect ratio display and the phone still fits comfortably in the hand. Because of the smaller bezels, even though it has a form factor of the Nokia 6.1, it has a much bigger screen and a much sleeker look. On the whole, display is definitely one of the best things about this phone. Now the next best thing about this phone is definitely performance. Unlike its predecessors, Nokia 6.1 Plus sports a Snapdragon 636 processor with Adreno 509 GPU. Now these are the Anti2 and Geekpen scores. Now this is definitely the first time when Nokia has offered something that's competitive with phones like Redmi Note 5 Pro, which also came with the same Snapdragon 636 processor. On the whole, performance on this phone is pretty good and definitely way better than any other Nokia phone launched earlier in the same price segment. Now the third best thing about this phone is definitely the design and build. Unlike the previous Nokia phones which came with a complete unibody metal design, this phone has a complete glass build with a 2.5D curved glass on the front and back which gave it a 93% glass surface on the whole. Now just like the previous Nokia phones which were known for their build quality, even this phone stands out from the rest of the phones in terms of build. Now going on next, this phone even has some pretty good cameras. On the rear, it sports a dual camera setup with a 16MP primary camera with f2.0 aperture followed by a 5MP secondary camera with f2.4 aperture. On the front, it is a 16MP selfie camera with f2.0 aperture. Now here are some sample pictures. Next it has a feature called Live Bokeh Mode, which is nothing but portrait mode for the rear cameras. Now unlike other phones, you can change the amount of blur effect we want before taking a picture and even after taking a picture, we can change the amount of blur effect and even the focus point, which is something very few phones offer. Next it has Bokeh Mode for selfies, which is once again another fancy name for portrait selfies. Next it has a feature called Bothy, where we can take pictures using the both front and rear cameras at the same time. Now in that, first we have the dual mode where both pictures get equal size and we get two perfect squares. Next it has PIP mode where images from one camera are much smaller than the other camera. Next it has lot of fun filters. Now the first one is the regular filters for your face where you can simply add these filters to your face and take pictures and even record it as a video. Next it is an Animoji kind of feature where an animated character mimics your face. Right now it is still in development phase so it's not very accurate and not that interesting either. Next we have studio lighting effects where we can adjust the lighting effect on our face. Right now it only works for selfies. Next it has slow motion video recording and time lapse. Next it even has google lens feature like almost all the phones these days. Now once you enable this mode, you can simply point at any object, then Google tries to identify that object and gives you some relevant links. It's fancy, but even this feature is still in beta and doesn't work properly. Now the next best feature about this phone would be the Android One program. Now just like most of the Nokia phones launched these days, even this phone is part of Android One program, so it will get monthly security and software updates at least for the next two years. So that's a really good thing. Now going on next, this phone supports dual 4G and dual Vo LTE and it even supports native video calling. So you don't have to install a third party application to make or receive video calls. Now going on next, this phone even has support for fast charging. Now I have tested it with the Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0 adapter and it still worked but sadly we didn't get a fast charger inside the box. We get a regular 10 watts power adapter like most of the phones these days. Next it has a feature called turn over to reject calls. Now just like the name suggests, once you enable this feature, you can simply turn over the phone to reject a call. Next it has mute on pickup. Now once you enable this feature, whenever you pick up your phone while it is ringing, ringtone will stop or get muted automatically. 
I personally like this feature a lot. Next, we have a fingerprint gesture to pull down the notification bar. Now, once you enable this toggle, you can simply swipe down or up on the fingerprint scanner to pull down the notification bar and send it back up. I really love this feature and I wish every other phone, especially Xiaomi phones, have this feature as well. Next, it has jump to camera. Now, once you enable this toggle, you can quickly open the camera application from anywhere by simply pressing the power button twice. It literally works everywhere. Whether you're gaming or if your phone is locked or you're on a lock screen, simply press the power button twice and it will open the camera instantly. Next, we have lift to check phone. Now, once you enable this toggle, every time you lift your phone, you will see the time, notifications and other information. Next, we have ambient display. Now, once you enable this feature, every time you get a message, whether it's a normal SMS or a WhatsApp message, display lights up and shows you the notification, which looks kinda cool. Next, we have tap to wake. Now this phone also has the double tap to wake feature. Just enable the toggle to activate it. And when your phone is locked, you can simply double tap the screen to wake it up. Next, it has a feature called night light. Now, according to a research, using our phones at night can affect our sleep because of the blue light emitted by the display. To prevent that, most of the phones come with a similar feature called night light. Now, once you enable this feature, it puts a warm tint on the screen and filters all the blue light. Now from this settings page, you can change the intensity of the tint and even schedule it to turn on and turn off automatically at a specific time or at sunrise and sunset. Now the final feature on this phone is the background activity manager. Now this feature stops applications from running in the background. Now you can simply decide to kill all the applications or simply blacklist a few applications which you don't want to run in the background. Doing this definitely improves the battery life of your phone but kinda ruins your user experience. For example, if you blacklist apps like WhatsApp, you might not receive messages immediately. Now the next best feature on this phone would be electronic image stabilization. Now just like the previous Nokia phone, even this phone supports electronic image stabilization and that too at even 4K resolution. Now stabilization isn't really awesome, but having it is definitely way better than not having it at all. So guys, those were the best features. Now let's look at some important tips and tricks. Now first I'll show you how to use the split screen mode. Now let's say you're already in an application. To start the split screen mode, you can simply press and hold this recent apps button. Then the current application will open in the top window. Now you can select the secondary application from the list over here or else you can press home button, go to the home screen, select the secondary application from this list or the app draw. Now we can resize these windows by simply dragging the central line, top or bottom. So there we go. Now if you want to use the secondary application as your primary application, you can simply drag it up and this application will go full screen. Now there is another way to use the split screen mode or turn it on. Simply go to the recent apps page then select the first application that you want to use in split screen mode. Just long press it, then swipe it to the top. Then you'll start the split screen mode. Now all this might be something you might have already been familiar with, but sometimes there are applications that do not open in the split screen mode. For example, Instagram. When you try to open it, you get this error message saying this application is not supported. So to use all applications in split screen mode, this is what you need to do. First, we need to enable the developer options. For that, go to settings, select system, select about, then scroll to the bottom and click the build number 7 times. Now once you do that, developer options will be enabled. Then go back, select developer options, it's right over here. Now scroll all the way to the bottom and enable force activities to be resizable. Now restart your phone. Now once you do that, you should be able to use all applications in split screen mode. Now after the recent update, Nokia has removed two features. First one is to display the battery percentage on the status bar and other one is to hide the display notch. Maybe after a few weeks or months, they might add it back. So here's where you can find it. So if you want to display the battery percentage, just check out the battery section and you should have a toggle that says display battery percentage. Once you enable that toggle, battery percentage should be visible on the status bar. Next, if you want to hide the notch, you need to go to the display settings and you should have an option that says status bar style. Just select that option and enable a toggle to hide the notch. Let me remind you once again, those two features were removed by Nokia recently, but they might come back pretty soon. Now going on next, if you want to take a screenshot on your phone, you can press the volume down and power button both at the same time. Once you do that, your phone will take a screenshot. No matter what you're doing, you can use this gesture that's pressing the volume down and power button to take a screenshot. Now for some reason, if you're not able to do that, we also have a toggle for that over here. It says screen capture and once you click it, it'll take a screenshot. It's really a super handy shortcut. 
Now going on next, if you want to change your default browser, default phone dialer or default SMS application, this is what you need to do. First go to settings, then select apps and notification. From here select advanced. Now select default apps. Now from here you can change your default browser. Let me set it to Google Chrome. Next we can change the default phone dialer, default messaging application and even the default home launcher. Now let's say you have installed Nova Launcher and want to set it as your default launcher. This is where you need to come. Now going on next, we have something called picture in picture mode. Starting from Android Oreo, that's 8.0, all the phones support picture in picture mode. Now here's a quick preview of how it looks like. Now let's say you're watching a video on Google Chrome. Then you can simply press the home button and that current video will shrink in size and flow in a floating window. Right now there are very few applications that are using this picture in picture mode like Zomato, Swiggy and even Google Maps. Let me give you another quick demonstration. Now let's say you're using Google Maps for navigation. Even in this application, you can simply press the home button while you're using this application and you will go to the home screen and you will still have a quick preview of a small map in a floating window. To close it, you can always swipe it to the bottom. That application will be closed. It is definitely very handy, but right now, as I've said, very few applications support that. Even YouTube supports that only if you have YouTube Red subscription, which is not available in India right now. Now for another quick shortcut, while watching videos on YouTube, you can see two black bars on either side. So to go full screen, you can do a pin gesture. Now once you do that, your display will go full screen and now you'll have a much more immersive experience. Now for the final tip, I'll show you how to set up face unlock feature on this phone. Now this phone doesn't have a dedicated face unlock feature, but if you want to use it, you can use the Google's trusted face feature. So to enable that, go to settings, then select security settings. From here, select smart lock, enter the password. Now select trusted face. Now just do the setup. Just give it some time. And we are done. Now in the lock screen, you can see a small human icon over here. That means your phone is trying to read your face and then unlock your phone. Now here's a quick preview. Now the phone is trying to read my face and now to unlock the phone, I can simply swipe up. Now if your phone is able to recognize your face, it will directly unlock the phone or else you'll see the lock screen like that. So guys, those were the best features and important tips and tricks for your Nokia 6.1 plus. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video and if you're planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description, it really helps the channel. If you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off, have a nice day.